Hello everyone, welcome back to ESL Jail. You know I am trying something different and you must have understood by the setup that I have here. It's totally different because it's not a regular lesson. So I am going to explain to you how you can make use of uh, this device called Google Home Assistant. Now this can help you in learning something. When it comes to learning English language you can use this one without any doubt. But I don't say that you can learn lots of things, you can learn everything about English using this Google Home device. But I say that it's, it, it's going to help you as a beginner, maybe as an intermediate learner and I don't think it can help you with advanced learners because whatever it's going to uh, give us as answers are going to be from, from top ranked websites on Google. That's how Google works. Okay, let's begin the show, shall we? Let's begin with the first question. Hey Google, what's up? Not much. Just looking up facts, checking the weather, and sifting through every song on Google Play. Actually, not much might have been an understatement. Google says, not much. Initially, Google said, not much. So this is the usual reply when you ask somebody, what's up? So what's up is a casual inquiry about what's happening in someone's life or what somebody is doing. Hey, what's up? You say, if there is nothing that you are excited about, you can say, not much, nothing much, not too much. But if there is something that keeps you excited, you can say, hey, you know, I'm going to throw a party tonight. You must be there. Don't forget. Or you say, you know, I got a job. That's exciting news. You can say that. Otherwise, if you don't have anything else to say, you can say, not too much, not much, nothing much. Okay. Okay, let's move to the next question. Hey, Google, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Anything I can help with? I'm doing great. That's good. And somebody says, how are you? You can say, I'm good. Thanks. I'm very good. Thanks. Or, I'm doing great. I'm doing well. Okay. Now, so as part of the second question, let me ask this one. Hey, Google, how old are you? Well, I launched in 2016. So, I haven't exactly been around for donkey's years. Launched in 2016. I haven't been here for donkey's years. So that's a wonderful idiom. Of course, it's a it's an informal idiom. Uh, donkey's years. So for donkey's years, a donkey's years means a long time. Google Home was launched in 2016. It means this device has not been here with us for a long time. For donkey's years. Wonderful idiom. Thank you, Google. Okay, let's move to the next question now. Hey Google, what is the meaning of the word leisure? This is the definition of leisure. Time when one is not working or occupied, free time. Time when one is not working or occupied, free time. So leisure is a free time. You are relaxed, you have free time, you do nothing that's routine. So you do something that's out of the routine, something that you like, or maybe you are relaxed. So leisure. By the way, this pronunciation leisure is British English. In American English, we say leisure. It's up to you. We Indians follow standard British English. So it's appropriate to say leisure. Leisure is also okay. By the way, this word leisure rhymes with pleasure, measure. That's how you can remember the pronunciation. Okay? Now, let's move to the next one. Okay, Google. What is a non-finite verb? According to Wikipedia, a non-finite verb is a verb that is not finite. Non-finite verbs cannot perform action as the root of an independent clause. Most non-finite verbs found in English are infinitives, participles, and gerunds. Additional non-finite forms found in some other languages include converbs, gerundives, and supines. Google says that non-finite verbs are not finite verbs. You know, these non-finite verbs do not have any tense, do not have any number or subject. So, they are independent. They do not change 
even if you change tense, number or subject. And one more thing, non-finite verbs are mainly three types, two infinitives and gerunds and participles. That's a different topic, we'll discuss that in a different class. Okay, let's get back to this question number five. Hey Google, what are model verbs? According to Wikipedia, a modal verb is a type of verb that is used to indicate modality, that is, likelihood, ability, permission, request, capacity, suggestions, order, obligation, or advice. Modal verbs always accompany the base form of another verb having semantic content. Modal verbs express modality. Modality means here permission, uh, ability, suggestion, advice, things like this. So these modal verbs are always used with main verbs like it may rain, the sky is overcast, the sky is full of clouds, it may rain. So to talk about possibility like this, here may is the modal verb, rain is the main verb. Okay, we got something. This is how you can question about anything and get the answers back from Google. But you must be careful sometimes it's going to give a different answer from what you expected. Okay. And let's move to the next question. This time let's try a different thing. Hey Google, where are the headquarters of WHO? The headquarters of the World Health Organization is in Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva, Switzerland. I don't know why but I like the way Google pronounced it. Switzerland, Switzerland. Geneva, Switzerland. Wonderful. Okay, let's look at the next question, number seven. Hey Google, why is India called a subcontinent? On the website Brainly.in, they say, India is called as a subcontinent as it is large enough and independent politically and geographically. India is large and independent politically and geographically. Moreover, India has almost all the features of a continent but it's not a continent so it's called a subcontinent good answer hey google what was the immediate cause of the second world war according to wikipedia the immediate precipitating event was the invasion of poland by nazi germany on september 1st 1939 and the subsequent declarations of war on Germany made by Britain and France, but many other prior events have been suggested as ultimate causes. So Google has said many things about this, but the first thing is invasion of Poland by North Germany and, and subsequent actions, subsequent events also. Means events that followed after this incident caused the Second World War. And Google also says that there are many events that triggered this. Uh, that triggered this situation or uh, that caused the Second World War. Okay, let's ask another question. This time it's not a question, let's try something different. Hey Google, let's play Crystal Ball. Okay, the Crystal Ball is ready to answer your yes or no question. Think of it in three, two, one. Will I get 1 lakh subscribers by the end of September? An answer is coming. The crystal ball says no. Independent case studies have concluded that crystal ball use can result in random and possibly stupid answers. So the crystal ball says no. Anyway, it's you who is going to make it possible. So it's in your hands. Please subscribe so that I can get 1 lakh subscribers. Let's all prove what Google has said is wrong. Moreover, Google has said that we should not depend on a crystal ball for making important decisions because it gives some random and stupid answers. Anyway, so let's get back to this one. Our last question in today's video. Hey Google, can you tell me about the motivational speaker Nick Vujicic? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Nicholas James Vujicic is an Australian Christian evangelist and motivational speaker born with tetraamelia syndrome, a rare disorder characterized by the absence of arms and legs. Nicholas James Vujicic, born in Australia, now lives in Los Angeles.
Wonderful. This man was born uh, with a medical condition called phocomelia, which affected the growth of limbs. So what happens is with phocomelia, there is absence of limbs or there is underdeveloped limbs. So he just has a small foot on his left hip, which helps him do all the things that he does now. He is also a motivational speaker and travels across the world. Okay, that's wonderful. That's it in this video. I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching and listening to my interaction with this Google Home Assistant. You need not worry about buying a, buying a device like this. You have Google Home Assistant installed in any of your Android phones. So you just try it with your Android phones and happy learning. And if you have really liked this video, hit that like button hard and then share it and then don't forget to comment because that is the only way I understand whether people like my work or not and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we have to prove this Google Home wrong. We want to make it possible. 1 lakh subscribers by the end of September. Thank you very much. See you in my next video.